Welcome. This is a, a brief 15-minute uh, uh, lecture uh, giving an overview of research designs. Uh, we don't cover all possible research designs here, but just touch on some of the, the major distinctions between uh, types of different research designs uh, and how they differ. Uh, so, how can research design designs differ? Well, one of the, kind of the broadest ways is in terms of the intended use of the results. Uh, so, we think about applied research versus basic research. Uh, and this simply being, uh, applied research is done whenever uh, there's some particular question or problem that the research is being designed to answer or fix, where the results will be directly applied to the real world. They have some, some obvious application. Whereas in, in basic research, there is no obvious application for the, the research. Um, not to say that there isn't an application, it's just not being designed with that intent. Uh, it's research for the sake of developing uh, information, for, for learning, uh, which much uh, applied research is built on uh, basic research. And basic research also, in turn, it can be influenced by the findings of applied research. So they, uh, they often go hand in hand, although they may seem quite different uh, at first glance. Uh, research can also differ in terms of the question being asked, um, uh, in terms of uh, sometimes you're simply wanting to uh, describe uh, behavior, sometimes you're interested in uh, uh, predicting uh, behavior, uh, sometimes you want to know, uh, be able to explain behavior, why something happened, kind of cause and effect, and sometimes you want to demonstrate that you can control behavior, right, which is very similar to explanation where uh, there's some desired uh, outcome and you want to see, can I demonstrate a change in what people are doing, thinking, or feeling? Um, and uh, broadly, uh, when the goals are description and prediction, you're probably looking at uh, descriptive research uh, and uh, correlational research, respectively. When the goal is explanation or control, you're talking more about experimental research, which we'll come back to the experimental and uh, uh, descriptive in a bit. Uh, the type of data collected can also influence what type of design you're looking at. Uh, again, the broadest um, kind of dichotomy here being quantitative versus qualitative research. Uh, and quite simply, it's if the data uh, are in numerical format, you're looking at quantitative research. And if they're non-numerical and can't easily, easily be quantified, then it's qualitative research. Uh, conceptually, quantitative, you're looking at measuring variables. How much of something uh, is present or absent? How long did it take? Right? Some sort of um, way to, to measure or quantify, uh, usually some behavior or uh, some construct. Whereas qualitative research is looking at, obviously, the quality uh, of a phenomenon or behavior. Um, so not how much of something happened, but what happened right, in, in qualitative or more uh, descriptive uh, terms. Um, one of the big uh, um, ways to, to distinguish between types of research is depending on whether or not uh, the researcher manipulates uh, a variable. And so you're looking at when you do manipulate a variable in the study, you're probably talking about experimental research. And when you're not, you're talking about descriptive research. And we'll talk more about those uh, in a bit. But um, related to those are quasi-experimental and correlational research. Now, quasi-experimental research is research that uh, is almost experimental. Right? There's three hallmarks of, of experimental research, which we'll talk about in a bit. And typically, a quasi-experimental study will have two of the three, but be missing one component. So it's all, you're almost able to infer some causation, but not quite but it's kind of more so than correlation research. Uh, correlation research can be thought of as a, uh, a subset of descriptive research, but uh, when the goal is beyond describing just how much of a behavior, but uh, a relationship between two or more variables, then you're looking at uh, correlation research, but you're not manipulating anything. Okay. Another way uh, designs can differ is in terms of the time frame for when data are collected, uh, cross-sectional <coughs> research, when you're looking at, you're interested in differences uh, across time or across age, but you collect all the data at once, right? So maybe you want to you want to say, well, um, how does this uh, this play behavior differ from uh, first grade to third grade to fifth grade? Rather than uh, following kids from first to fifth grade, you get some first graders, some third graders, and some fifth graders. So you take a cross section 
of uh, the group you're interested in looking at that are at different developmental levels, different ages, different periods of time to kind of uh, make judgments about uh, how things differ at different ages, at different points in time. Whereas if you had uh, done that study where you get a group of first graders and you follow them over time, you measure them in first grade, measure them at third grade, measure them again at fifth grade, now you're talking about longitudinal research. Right? And you also potentially could combine cross-sectional and longitudinal research, right, where you take a cross-section and then follow all members of that cross-section across time, uh, and you're looking at cross-sequential research, being one name for that. Also, uh, often um, correlational, uh, another descriptive research, is done uh, retrospectively, where um, you aren't uh, gathering data uh, wh about what's happening now or following it. You're looking back at uh, kind of archival records uh, or people's reports of things that happened in the past. Right? So you're looking at uh, some type of retrospective uh, uh, design. Okay, on to uh, kind of one of the main dichotomies we talk about when talking about research, research design is looking at experimental versus correlational research, right? Because these are the probably the two, uh, uh, probably the most important difference, um, uh, at least once you get down to quantitative versus qualitative, which most of what we talk about in class is quantitative research. Within quantitative, it can be experimental or correlational. So what is experimental research? How is it different than correlational? Well, if done properly, you can infer causality from the results of an experimental design. Right? How far you can uh, generalize your, your inference of causality depends on how you designed your study. But if you did it right and you had good internal validity because of your uh, methodological decisions, then you have pretty strong causal inference. Right? Uh, in an experiment, experimental design, uh, you have at least one independent variable, could have more, at least one, and at least one dependent variable, again, could have more. Uh, the independent variable is the one the researcher manipulates, right, where um, there'll be something uh, that's done differently to one group than the other, uh, or some way that uh, a group will differ because of what the experiment decided. And it could be uh, an instructional manipulation, they told one group one thing, told another group something else. could be an environmental manipulation, where they did one thing to one group and did something different to something else. Right? Um, and for, every for any independent variable you have, there has to be at least two levels, right? Because it has to be variable. If it has one level, it doesn't vary. So always at least two levels of an independent variable, and they're typically uh, uh, categorical. So it's either this or this could have three levels, so uh, level A, level B, or level C, or more. The more levels you have, more people you have to have. Uh, and then you have a dependent variable, uh, or more. And the dependent variable um, most often is uh, um, continuous, and it's the variable that's measured. Right? And it's, thought it's called the dependent variable because it's thought that participants score on the dependent variable what what they what you measure what their output is should depend on what level of the independent variable they received or are in right so it should depend on the other variable whereas the independent doesn't depend on the dependent it, your what your value for the independent variable was was based on what group the researcher put you in right okay the three hallmarks of experimental research obviously uh, you have to manipulate an independent variable Right, so you do something different uh, to the at least two two groups. Uh, have to have the power to assign to condition or to groups. Right? So they don't get the, the participants don't get to pick what group they're in. They're not pre-existing groups. The experimenter puts them in different groups. And again, to have the most internal validity, <laughs> sorry, validity, uh, they should you should be uh, randomly assigning people to different levels of the independent variable or different groups to be in. Okay, so manipulate the IV, power to assign to condition, and then the last one, which is a very broad one, experimental control is exerted. Right? And this is where you're talking about doing everything you can so that um, people at different levels of the independent variable, their experiences in the study don't differ at all in any way, shape, or form except for the independent variable. So they're they're doing it at the same time in the same type of place, with the same type of interactions with the with the researcher, except for what it is you're trying to make different between the two groups, which is the IV. 
So, and as much experimental control as you exert, uh, that's uh, that will directly influence how much internal validity your study has. So this is all in in comparison and contrast to correlation research, uh, where you can't infer causality. Right. So if you, you find statistically significant results, fantastic, you found a relationship between or among variables, and that might indicate causality because when causal when a causal relationship is present, there should be a correlational relationship there too. Right? But just because there's correlational relationship doesn't mean causality is present. And two primary reasons for that. One, the third variable problem, right? So variables A and B are related. Uh, the more of A, the less of B. The more of A, the more of B. A, so A causes B, right? Well no, it could be some third variable C that accounts for that relationship between A and B. Maybe it causes A and causes B, or A causes C, which causes B. Um, classic example, uh, there's a correlation between number of ashtrays in people's homes and the probability of getting uh, lung cancer. So ashtrays cause lung cancer. Well, no. People who smoke have more ashtrays, so smoking causes you to have more ashtrays. People who smoke have a higher probability of having lung cancer, so smoking causes the lung cancer. And because it causes both those things, those two things become related uh, in a correlational sense. Uh, the second big problem is dr directionality. So A and B are related. Well, does A cause B or does B cause A? So we know that there's a often a strong correlation between uh, uh, anxiety symptoms and depressive symptoms uh, in, in people in, uh, um, in clinical samples. Well, did they have anxiety so long that uh, that eventually led to kind of these high cortisol levels which contributed to depression? Or were they uh, depressed so long that they began to think negatively and that caused them to worry and start to develop these anxiety symptoms? Could be one, could be the other, could be both. If, if you find a correlation, you don't know which one caused which. You don't know the direction of that causal error, arrow if in fact there is a causal arrow there. Um, and finally, uh, for correlation research, uh, the types of variables you're looking at, instead of an independent and dependent variable, you're looking at predictor variables and criterion variables. Again, at least one of each, at least one predictor, one criterion, could have multiple uh, of each one of them. Uh, and the predictive variable is the variable you're predicting with. So if I know this, if I know what I know about my predictor, what can I expect on this other thing, this other thing being the outcome or criterion? Um, Often, uh, uh, which variable is the predictor, which is the criterion in a correlation study, uh, it can be logically uh, uh, derived. So you say, well, I want to know uh, what's the relationship between uh, scores on the SAT in high school and scores on the uh, GRE after college. Right? Well, with that, the SAT scores are going to be your predictor and GRE scores are going to be the criterion right? because you know one score before the other. You know the SAT score before you know the GRE score so it's pretty clear that SAT scores will be the predictor, GRE scores are the outcome or the criterion. Right? Now if we're talking about going back to that relationship between anxiety and depression, well which one's the predictor, which one's the criterion? Could be either one. Uh, so sometimes it's decided arbitrarily. Uh, if you have a theoretical reasons to believe that uh, anxiety precedes depression, well then anxiety would be your predictor and depression would be your uh, criterion. Um, okay, but again, the primary difference uh, between experimental research and correlation research is that uh, your ability to infer causation, that, uh, that level of internal validity, which experimental research having much higher internal validity than correlational research. Now, and we'll talk in the future about uh, with correlational research, there are things you can do to kind of bump up your internal validity, but um, because of the design, there's kind of a ceiling on internal validity where you can't ever get it to the level of internal validity, the level of confidence and causal relationships that you can achieve with experimental research. But you can uh, have more internal validity or less depending on certain design decisions that you make. Okay, uh, that's all for now. Take care.